Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever and whenever you may be listening to this broadcast. I'm Mark Holliday. Welcome to your encouraging word for today. Listen, when I'm sitting in the gym, and I'd like to look around the gym once I do my cool down and I'm just uh, sitting there waiting before I leave. I look around the gym because the gym reminds me of the church in so many ways. What do I mean by that? You get people that come to the gym week after week, month after month, year after year and they never change. Then you get some people come to the gym and you see them with their belts and their shoes and their wraps and that lets me know they're coming with tools and equipment and things to help aid in their uh, growth in the gym. And then I look at some people and I notice they used to work out with one individual, then they're working out with another and the person they're working with now is a little bit bigger than the other person they was working out with. What did I notice about that? They change their circle so they can raise their bar. And this is what I want to talk to you about today. Sometimes you need to change your circles, change the people you hanging around to change your bar, to bring you up to another level. Because whoever you hang around, whatever you're looking at, do you know it change your expectations? What I want to talk to you about today is this. When you raise your expectations, you're going to raise the increase of the blessings of God on your life because your faith is going to be stretched. Your faith is going to be challenged. Your mindset is going to change. As someone told me many years ago, your mind, your spirit is like a rubber band. Once it's been stretched, it never goes back to the same size. And likewise with you, I'm going to show you in the scripture that when Jesus hung out with his disciples, he was constantly stretching them. He was constantly challenging them. He was constantly growing them. And if you're going to be a believer in the kingdom of God in these last days, God wants you to continue to grow. He wants you to stretch. He wants you to raise your expectations. And in doing so, you're going to see the power of God, the blessings of God. You're going to see your ministry begin to grow. Now watch this. Many times people can't grow because their circle is too small. If if you're the smartest and the biggest and the baddest person in your circle, it's time for you to change your circle. And I always say this also, you're either growing or you're either dying. And if you're not around people that make you feel uncomfortable in this aspect, in other words, they're challenging you, they're admonishing you to come higher, you need to get around some new people to encourage you, to equip you, empower you. Now that being said, let's turn to Matthew the 14th chapter. I'm going to run through this very quickly to drop that encouraging word. I'm going to start posting videos. There's going to be a greater lift of what I'm speaking now, but this is just a, nut, a nugget to wet your palate. And if you'll be looking forward to other videos, which is going to be a greater and longer teaching, maybe 30 or 40 minutes. But look what it says here in Matthew, the 14th chapter, starting with the 25th verse. I'm going to read to the 28th verse. It read as follow. And the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a spirit. And they cried out for fear. But straightway or immediately, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer. It is I. Be not afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee. And he said, come. And Peter stepped out of the boat and began to walk on the water. That last part was my paraphrase. But what I want to talk to you about is this. Notice when Jesus began to walk on the water. If you read in the scripture, all 12 disciples saw him, but only one person took note of it. When Peter saw Jesus walking on the water, it raised his expectation. But a few things happened even before that. Notice that we go back to the 25th verse. The 26th verse, it says, when the disciples saw him, notice all the disciples saw him, but it only affected one individual Two, it says they were troubled when they saw him. They thought it was a spirit. Do you know when the things of God begin to manifest many times in the church? If you're not conscious or cognizant of what the scripture is saying, it'll trouble you. Many people have called the works of God satanic. When you start talking about miracles and signs and wonders and healing, in prosperity and healing and that you can walk in the blessings of God. Most people want to write you off to a certain demographic. They want to write you off to a certain group. They want to say God isn't doing those things. Those things have passed away with the apostle. We just need to talk about the goodness of God and love and salvation. You got to do more than just teach the Bible. 
You got to live the Bible. You got to preach the gospel. And after doing so, you got to expect signs and wonders and miracles to follow your teaching. In scripture, when the disciples and the apostles preached, the Bible said God confirmed his word with signs following. We got to get past just the anointing to teach and preach or the anointing to say, as Lester Sumrall say, we got to get to the point where we have the demonstration of God. Now back to the scripture, it says they were were troubled. Why? They saw something they never saw before. And when you get around people that challenge you, they challenge your faith, they challenge what you believe in a good manner to which you start increasing what you believe. You start uh, believing on a different level. It becomes troubling sometimes. Why? You're being stretched. There was a time that I didn't fully believe in miracles. I didn't fully believe in healing. I, f I didn't fully believe in God can prosper me. I didn't fully believe that the power of God could be manifested in my life. I soon began to do what? I stopped looking for miracles solely and I start walking by faith. Now my marriage is blessed. My manhood is blessed. My children are blessed. My finances are blessed. My body is blessed. My friends are blessed. You know why? Because we're walking by faith and we're all always looking for someone to challenge us, to stretch us, to bring us to that new level. Because when you being challenged, what happens a lot of times, you become troubled in spirit, not in a bad way, but what's happening is your belief system is being stretched and challenged. It's being rearranged and fortified. And what's beginning to happen, you're beginning to, you're going to begin to step into a new realm with God. Let me move on here. It says in verse 26, and they were troubled saying it is a spirit and they cried out for fear. But watch this in verse 27, but straightway or immediately Jesus spake of them saying, be of good cheer. It's I don't be afraid. Never be afraid to step out into the new depths and things of God. Don't let anyone talk to you and say, oh, you got to watch that now. I, I, I read something about this person. Have you noticed more people who say, that this person is the enemy are really going nowhere. They're not growing. They're not stretching themselves. They always begging for money. They always talking about what God is not doing. They always talking about their ministry and their marriage and the problems and the troubles they have. But I notice they're always persecuting the people that's talking about their marriage. That's talking about their finances. They're talking about their ministries are growing. They're talking about the contacts that they're making. You know what? The Bible says those who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Also, God has also said when you begin to believe him and when you begin to walk away from things that held you back and then Jesus turned around and say, whatever you live, I'll give you uh, more family, more homes, more prosperity, whatever it may be. But with those blessings will come persecution. If you're willing to step out in the things of God, the word of God, notice you're going to suffer persecution because you're leaving the camp. You're leaving the plantation. You're leaving all those slave masters that said that you couldn't leave it and you got to watch those things. Remember, I keep quoting to you second Kings, the fourth chapter, when Elijah prophesied to the woman and her husband, they was going to have a child in the new living translation. She said, Oh no, man of God, don't get my hopes up like that. That's what's going on in the church today. When you start getting people hopes up about the word of God, what they can have, what they can be, what they can become and start teaching the gospel. People say, well, you got to watch that because I knew a minister once upon a time ago that led people astray. Yeah. But what about the hundreds and thousands of gospel ministers that led people into the promised land? They preached the gospel and they brought deliverance to their family, to their ministries, to their manhood, their womanhood, to your psyche, to your spirit. You have to to step out and allow someone to encourage you to raise your bar, raise your expectation. When your expectation is raised, you're going to be like Peter, just like in this passage of scripture and verse 28, when Peter saw Jesus walking on the water, he said, Lord, if that's you bid me to come, Jesus said, come on, Cleta, step out of the boat. And this is what God is encouraging you to do. He's encouraging you to step out of the boat, step out of your comfort zone, step out of those friends that's been holding you back, even begin to pull your wife, pull a good friend, pull your children along. And if they don't want to come, go by yourself and let them follow you. I'll end it with this. I love the story of Elijah when he began to throw his mantle or his coat on Elisha. Elisha cut up the oxen symbolizing I'm leaving this life and I'm going to follow something else. 
For the next years to come, Elijah served under Elijah and he saw Elijah perform many miracles. According to scripture, Elijah performed seven miracles, but watch this, Elisha performed 15. What happened? Elijah raised the expectation of Elisha. And this is what God want to do. He want to position you around people to raise your expectation because it's time for you to start walking on a different financial status. It's time for your ministry to expand beyond borders. It's time for your ministry uh, to start talking and speaking on different aspects and facets of the scripture. God is not doing a new thing. God has been doing what he's always been doing. It's us that's catching up with him. Listen, I'm going to stop right there, Mark Holiday, but this is, I'm going to pick back up next broadcast. I want you to start raising your expectation. Don't let anyone talk you out of what God can do, what he has done. Don't let anyone tell you that's ended with the apostles. If the gifts of the spirit, if the miracles and the power working of God is dead, that means God is dead and we know God is not dead. I'm going to stop right there, Mark Holiday. That's your encouraging word for today.